Please be seated. Welcome to the regular meeting of council for uh, Monday, November 9th. Um, and you can see we have, <coughs> when the rest of the council is caught up with Councillor Allen Annie, we have new toys. Um, I'm assuming if it's on, if it's green, then it's working. No, you can't. You're right. For this evening, okay. Thank you. Um, Councillors, are there any late items? City Clerk, is there any late items? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, three late items have been distributed. They will be on your agenda as items F3.1, F3.2, and F3.3. Okay, thank you. Uh, then a motion to approve the agenda as amended would be in order. All in favor? Carried. And we have the, the minutes, a uh, special meeting held at 5.30 and a regular council meeting held at 7 p.m. on uh, October 26th. Uh, a motion to adopt those minutes would be in order. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Uh, this brings us to the public input period. Uh, it's an opportunity for the public to address council on topics of relevance to city council. Maximum of four speakers for no more than three minutes each to be accommodated. Is there anybody wishing? Mr. Cole, your hand went up first. Please. Oh. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, Later on your uh, tonight's agenda uh, is a request, and in it it says commitment to complete. And I just want to correct that. We really aren't asking uh, for a commitment to complete on our office project for the Junior Hockey Society. Uh, it's to assist or partner in the finishing touches is all we're asking. Um, <clears throat> it was 11 months ago that we applied to the city to utilize community forest uh, reserve funds to expand the Bulldogs office and physically and aesthetically attach it to the multiplex, provide a better experience for all multiplex patrons and especially our Bulldogs fans, um, including an undercover walkway and ticket lineup area connecting the handicapped parking spots to the main entrance. If anybody's been there lately, you'll see pictures later in the agenda. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic aesthetically what we've accomplished there uh, on the front of that building. We took that little bump that was there and turned it into a, a flowing front of the, of the building. We're only days away from completing the exterior and lockup. Uh, and uh, the Bulldogs are on an 18 away game uh, starting after next Sunday, and we hope to be finishing and moving into that office uh, in early December. But there will be several finishing items and pr small projects in the new space and in the atrium and fireplace area that will still be, need to be completed late November and early December. And we're hoping that the city and possibly QP 118 will partner with us to help make the final uh, product truly first class. Uh, we have the funds, the budget was pretty correct. Uh, we've had a few surprises in the budget. Uh, we put extra concrete and we extended the walkway around the corner of the building to make it more physically functional. Uh, so we've been, uh, we're a stretched right to the limit of our budget, but we will complete the job. Uh, and uh, with your assistance, it could be, uh, it could be truly great, uh, both inside and outside. I think you'll like the cedar products, you'll like the posts, uh, you'll like the McLean cut mills, uh, beams. I want to note that we've used all local contractors. Uh, McGill Engineering's provided us some engineering uh, uh, work. Bill Gortz came out of retirement and volunteered his time to help get us set up and uh, overcome some architectural issues early on. The, yep. Um, we, and uh, we revised the layout, especially of the rafters and stuff, to make them more functional. McLean Mill cut uh, all our fascia boards. Uh, the Bulldogs came out and stained them. And, uh, uh, and uh, the Bulldogs also had used the use of the thanks to the Port Authority, used their big warehouse and we stained all the cedar siding both sides, 5,000 square feet of it. Um, 
let's see, Beaver Creek Home Center, Albany Home Hardware, Bowerman Contracting, Al Brown Roofing, Aerosmith Glass, Ames and Tyler Electric, and of course the Port Authority and ILWU have all contributed both in kind and substantially to the project. We'd like the city just to take a little more and thank you very much for having the faith in us with the community forest funds. Anybody else who uh, wishes to address council? Please come forward. Uh, state your name. Hello. For the record. Alicia. Lisa Maru. Hello. How are you guys? Doing? Uh, happy birthday, Chris. I love the tie. <laughs> Looking good. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just here just to let you guys know that uh, some really neat news on the kiteboarding front is that um, Kiteboarder Magazine did do an article on Port Alberni, and uh, it turned out really incredible. It's uh, the first article in the magazine. This magazine it hits national stands for kiteboarders all around the world. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. I don't really need to talk for two more minutes. So <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, you guys want to see a little bit? Okay, so I've actually got even my parents around here, which is pretty neat. So like right here, there's uh, me watching my mom and my dad right here. <laughs> and then, um, right, so, you know, I mean, this is showing, like, right here, this is Greece, just to show um, we're around the world. So then right here, this is uh, my partner there, Paul, he's kiting on the inlet here. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it's great. It's showcasing the launching and the landing and the story that happened here and how city and the Port Authority and the kiteboarders all work together. And, um, yeah, and the future of the area, just uh, there I am enjoying the inlet. So can't wait for next season to get out there and play some more. Where can we get a copy of this? Um, you can either get a copy of it on uh, Kiteboarder, uh, the kiteboardermagazine.com. You can order them. Uh, they're, they have them distributed um, all around the world through uh, different kiteboarding schools oh. and kiteboarding stores. So at this point, we don't have a school or a store, so you'll have to order it online. But yeah, feel free if you want uh, to take this, and I'll get it back from you. It's enough, Dennis? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> Is anybody else who wishes to address council? Please come forward. State your name for the record. For the minutes. My name is Brianna Pearson. <laughs> um, I don't really have anything prepared, and I don't know if this is the time to talk about it, but um, just regarding the marijuana dispensary, I just think it's really interesting in a town of 17,000 people, we have 13 liquor stores, and I think it's very clear that alcohol has caused a lot of problems in Port Alberni. Um, my dad, who just recently passed away of cancer, he really benefited from marijuana when he was going through radiation, chemo. I have a lot of friends who've had cancer and has really benefited from it. Um, I think it's kind of a prehistoric way of thinking when we say that it'll do harm to our community when there's actually so many benefits to marijuana. Myself, I don't smoke pot anymore. I don't eat it or anything, but I know that it does help a lot of people. And I think that maybe we should reconsider it in the community. And yeah, I think there's a lot of evidence showing the good it can do opposed to the, the harm it can do on people. So I think maybe we should reconsider that. Thank you. That's all Thanks, I have to say. Anybody else who wishes to address council? living proof of two aneurysms, and if it wasn't for marijuana, uh, I'd be taking, and I brought it with me, and to get rid of my headaches that I have every day. I'm chowing down extra straight Tylenol. I don't want that anymore, where if I eat a mar marijuana cookie, it takes my headache away. I don't think you should shut it down. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Thank you. Thanks, babe. All right. That's our uh, four presenters. Uh, we have space on the agenda for four presenters. Yes. Sorry. We've had four. Thank you. Um, City Clerk, are there no delegations? Thank you. Um, did you have something prepared for me? I gave it to you. <laughs> did you? Maybe I left it in the... Thank you.
proper resolution just to hear the last person talking because I don't see any other hands and all that. I would just like to hear one opportunity if it's just one. If, if you wish to uh, make a motion. Uh, and I would like to make a motion that we allow one more. I'll second, second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried, okay. Yes, sir, please come forward. Well, I really did, oh. So my name's Yvonne Chase. Um, I really didn't expect that would be speaking on this subject, but uh, after hearing about it, yeah, I'm gonna speak on it. My mother died from advanced Parkinson's disease. It's a very terrible disease. She had it for 25 years. In the end, none of the medications would work. I would have to go underground to find low-grade pot to make articles for her to eat. And in the end, it was the only thing that worked for her Parkinson's. Now, I don't agree with the marijuana laws, and I, uh, I, I, I do realize that order has to be kept. We do have to follow the laws. But I suggest you take a really good look around you and see what's going on by not allowing that store. 85-year-old woman, nothing else works for her except the pot. You really got to give your head a shake. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, proceeding with our, uh, with our agenda. Uh, under unfinished business, uh, we have a uh, response to questions from October 26th, regular council meeting. Uh, the the first question that was asked was how many of the 12 recommendations adopted as part of the 2011 Chris Green report on the management structure were implemented. Uh, in fact, there were 24 recommendations in the Chris Green report from 2011. 13 were adopted at the time the report was received. Four were not adopted. Seven were referred to the budget and of these, four were later adopted and three were not. So a total of 17 recommendations were adopted out of 24. Um, this, the next question was two recommendations were pending. Uh, the review, was this done? Uh, recommendation 24 was that uh, uh, a JE plan review be undertaken, it, and it was. Recommendations related to exempt staff salary structure were initially on hold until after completion of the recommended uh, review uh, and were implemented after the review was completed. And the, uh, the third question that was asked, are, semi, are annual and semi-annual performance evaluations done? And uh, the answer to that is no uh, formal performance evaluations are done during probationary period and subsequent performance reviews uh, as, as seen needed by the individual supervisor. And the last question that was asked was, when will the public have access to the new management structure review report? And uh, the public will have access when council releases it, which is uh, likely before the end of 2015. There's still a few personnel issues that we're in the middle of. Um, staff reports. Before you move on, Mayor. Yes. Um, just wondering, will those responses uh, be included in the minutes? Uh, it, city. It would be helpful if they were. City clerk. But the fact, but the fact that we have responded to them will be. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Minions. Is there anywhere that? Uh, full breakdown of the response will actually be able to be found for people who aren't here, specifically the person who asked the question who I don't think is here. Yeah, he's here. Oh, well, there you are back there. Um, I'm just wondering if it will form part of the record anywhere because I think it might be part of the process that people want to actually be able to find the answers down the road. Ms. Mayor, the Chris Green Report is available on the city's website, and the first two pages of the uh, report are a synopsis of the, the 24 recommendations. Um, and there is a column to the right of each of the recommendations indicating council's direction, whether it was adopted, uh, referred, or not adopted. So 
So to the extent that it was done in 2011, those, those outcomes are, are listed. With respect to the seven referred items, it doesn't indicate whether they were finally adopted or not adopted, and, uh, and as the mayor indicated, four were adopted and three were not. I was um, speaking more to the new format that we have with answering questions at the beginning of council meetings and wondering if those records will be available to the public beyond them just listening to a council meeting. Anywhere. So at this time, no. We don't have a okay. Thank you. <laughs> include a lot of verbatim. We only include directions in our minutes. We don't include discussions. So at this point, um, that would not be part of the minute. Maybe in the agenda going forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mayor, may I could just comment that we are moving towards our council minute, our council meetings being taped and available on the internet, and so you'll be able to listen to every word that's said forever uh, once those are on the internet, and so that would <laughs> constitute verbatim minutes of every word spoken. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Sylvia, you had a question. No, I was just. Uh, issue that if somebody's asking a question I feel like the answer should be including in the minutes for anybody to view and see uh, including with our website so if the city manager is telling me that uh, we're unable to do that at this time because uh, when it comes to social media not everybody's on social media and I would hate for another person to have to come forward and ask the same questions again when it's already on the website so if there's any way we could look into adding that question, even scan the piece of paper with your answers, and then it'd be suffice. But I'll leave that to the city manager to figure that one out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then let's move on to uh, staff reports. Accounts. Uh, Councillor Washington, do you want to make that motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move that the certification of the Director of Finance dated November 9, 2015 be received in checks numbering 132914 to 133072 inclusive in payment of accounts totaling $672,740.08 be approved. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Uh, Harbor Key lease uh, for Unit 16. Uh, Councillor Minions, you want to make that motion? That Council for the City of Port Alberni authorized the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a lease for Unit 16 at the Harbor Key with Homestead Cookhouse, John Mercer, Joan Thurston, for a three year term commencing November 1st, 2015, at the current monthly rent of $289.28 per month. Is there a second? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, city planner, we have uh, a marijuana dispensaries report uh, dated November 2nd, 2015. Um, it's requesting council's direction <coughs> with, uh, with regards to the handling of illegal medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, it's quite a Quite a report, a uh, very concise report, Council, um, with some background discussion and three options uh, laid out. Um, and there is a recommendation and uh, it's requesting Council direction. So at this point, we make it uh, open for comment, Council. Councillor McClellan? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I've been looking at this pretty much all weekend, I guess, trying to figure out what to do. I'm very concerned about the subject entirely and I did write up a motion to, to go with this report which is a little bit different than what's written but it kind of combines number one and number two and because we got busy this afternoon I didn't <laughs> get to hand it to you or tell you what I was doing so I'll just give one to Davina and let it go there and I'll read it if I may um, the concern I have and just as an introduction is that uh, other towns have had uh, marijuana dispensaries open up and they're opening up all over and they're getting themselves way behind an eight ball trying to catch up and trying to do something about them. They're not strictly legal and there's all kinds of court cases playing around and we have a new government that wants to change things. Everybody's jumping the gun. I would like to see Port Alberni be proactive and control if they become legal where they be and if they're not legal get rid of them in the end but for now only have them in a couple of places and have some kind of some kind of mechanism to control what, what we have. And so what I've got here 
is whereas there's already one dispensary open on 3rd Avenue and several others wish to open quickly, and the City of Port Alberni has no regulations for such facilities and present zoning would likely allow in any area a pharmacy could go, and there are several locations being possibly eyed for one of those dispensaries right now. Other cities have been caught napping and are now trying to catch up to the problem. And there's several places in, in this town particularly that are open and vacant right now. I understand people want to put them in and I sure don't want them there. So I would like to move that the Council of City of Port Alberni direct staff to come back for the next regular council meeting, November 23, 2015, with recommended zoning and operating conditions for medical marijuana dispensing facilities in Port Alberni. You'll notice they're in quotations, because I don't even know if that's the right term for these facilities, but they're there. And if this motion passes, I have a second one to try and control it a bit more. I'll second that. Okay, discussion? Uh, Councillor Paulson? Yeah, I, I just want to make it very clear that um, at the council level, um, our hands are tied. At the, basically, at this point in time, um, as the dispensary sits, it is illegal under the criminal code. And certainly, council has no jurisdiction over the criminal code, so that becomes um, that comes it becomes an RCMP issue. It's not that we're turning a blind eye to it. Um, I I met with um, the the owner uh, for almost two hours the other day, and um, he's a very good salesperson, and he believes very strongly in in his cause and in what he has. But he certainly does not deny that they are operating under the um, wrong side of the law as it sits today. Um, and I said, Justin, um, you know, you've put council in a very awkward position because as a council, I don't think we can condone or endorse something that is illegal in, in the eyes of society today. That's not to say that's not going to change in the next six months or six years. Um, there seems to be a, a huge... Uh, groundswell. I know that our uh, present Liberal government, um, it was number three on their on their campaign list, was to legalize marijuana, period. And I don't have a problem with that because all of a sudden now it becomes a tax-paying, uh, revenue-generating uh, part of society as it, as, it, as it grows. I do not believe that that's going to happen overnight, and I think a lot of people are jumping the gun. And one of the, one of the questions that I asked the owner is I said, Justin, I think you're ahead of yourself. I think your time would be better spent lobbying the provincial and federal governments for your cause to make sure that you're regulated. The fringe operators don't show up. We know there's people out there that, that are probably going to take advantage of this, and it's, it's not the people that we want to deal with. I will say that the gentleman that I met with is very articulate. Um, I believe that he's a good businessman, and he believes very strongly in his cause. Um, but at this point in time, it is illegal. I, 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 I just don't know what, what to say or what to do about it. This precludes my personal experience with it. I smoked it. I inhaled. Yes, I did. <laughs> and, but those were my younger days, you know, and, and certainly it didn't turn out to be a thing for me. But having said that, um, we're in a really, really awkward position here as a council at the municipal level. I talked to both our MLA and our MP about it, and they both, their eyes kind of glassed over, and they said they would get back to me. This is over two weeks ago. Haven't heard a word from them, and I, I won't get into the provincial and federal politics of it, but, um, but um, you well, yeah, it's, you know, but, but I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this is an example, as I perceive it, of, of downloading from the federal, provincial, down to the municipal, municipalities when it's their responsibility. Those are the people that deal with the criminal code. And, um, you know, it, quite frankly, it, it, um, it makes me angry that, that the senior levels of government do that to municipalities. And it's not just this issue. I will tell you that I talked to my um, physician. I had a doctor's appointment two Thursdays ago. Um, it's general consensus in Port Alberni amongst physicians, uh, virtually all of them, that they do not prescribe uh, medical marijuana in Port Alberni. This is our, our physicians. So that may be word upon themselves, and you can talk about uh, conspiracies with uh, Pfizer and, and big drug companies. Um, so 
it's not that we've taken this really lightly, but it's we're really between a rock and a hard place, and I just don't know. Um, uh, I think, you know, if it if if there's a lack of will uh, to carry out uh, from the policing issue, I totally agree with uh, where Councillor McClellan is coming from, that we as a council need to put into. Um, I think into our zoning and stuff to make sure that, first of all, I don't think they should be across the street from a school, you know, those sorts of sorts of things that help protect us as a community. So um, I will tell you that I'm torn. I, I, I have seen the negative side of um, uh, cannabis. Uh, I have a friend that um, uh, passed away and um, he had multiple seizures late in his life and uh, died way too young, directly attributed to overuse of cannabis and I know that there's there's differences so anyway I'm meandering here I apologize for the long long treaties but um, um, yeah I have mixed feelings yeah okay thank you uh, Councillor Alamany thank you Mr. Mayor um, I'll uh, I'll speak in favor of the motion that that Councillor McClellan put forward uh, I, I echo uh, uh, Councillor Paulson I think it's clear that the, the, the legislation federally has not caught up with society, I think, um, and we're, uh, we're faced to, to deal with that mess, um, and it is a mess. <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, it's something that's very uh, 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 topical. I mean, the, the room uh, and how it's full right now is, is evidence to that. Um, I, uh, I spoke to um, uh, the RCMP officer in, in Nanaimo who's in charge of the drug enforcement there um, just to get an idea of their situation. Um, uh, obviously, there's, there's many dispensaries that are popping up all over the island, all over the, all over the province. Uh, I thought that Nanaimo had two or three. Uh, turns out they have 10, um, and Victoria has 17. Uh, we have one so far. Uh, so I think we're in a in a very advantageous position to be able to try to put down uh, rules and give ourselves as a city some tools uh, to um, uh, control how the, that uh, rolls out um, so that as as Councillor Paulson said we we uh, we can we can have some some assurance of safety for the community uh, and um, assurance for uh, uh, where we see these uh, end up and how they're run as a business uh, and the information that they, they put out um, to the public so that we, we can have some surety for their, for their dispensary. Um, that's about it. Okay. Any other comment, Councillor Minions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will start by saying that um, I've been a little disappointed by how this situation has been handled so far because I think that a lot of the information that has been put out there has been very confusing to the public. Um, I think that in the future we need to make sure council is on the same page before we move forward. Um, my position is very much that I think we need to be proactive about this. I think right now we have one dispensary and next week we could have five dispensaries. Um, we have no idea how fast they're going to open up. Um, we have no idea who's going to be opening them, where they're going to be located. Um, and at this point, we have no control over that. I think that the RCMP um, should handle this situation however they decide they should handle this situation. That's completely up to them. If they choose to shut them all down, we should fully support that. If they choose to focus their resources elsewhere, we should support that. Um, I think that it's not in our mandate as a council to decide whether or not this is illegal or illegal or how we want to interpret the law. Our job is to um, be proactive and make sure the community runs as smoothly as possible and I think that we can give ourselves tools to determine where the dispensaries go, determine how um, they operate in some ways and I think we should be doing that. Um, there are other communities who have been put in bad positions because their dispensaries opened up before they put any regulations in place and I don't want to see that happen here. So I would very much like to see us um, support Councillor McClemmons' motion and move forward in a way that's going to 
make this go as smoothly as possible until the federal or provincial or the RCMP or whoever wants to actually set the law sets the law and clarifies it. Thank you. Any other comment? Uh, Councillor Sobe? So, I've been at this for two weeks doing all my research and uh, unfortunately um, I'm not going to support this motion that's tabled right now because it actually <laughs> endorses the fact that uh, we're letting this dispensary operating illegally at this time. Um, I disagree at a point as for the RCMP. I'm not going to get into the argument about the side effects, long-term effects, or the very good use of medical wana because I've seen both sides. In 27 years of my service, Unfortunately, I only see the bad side of it, and, uh, and, but the thing is, I was given advice from a good friend, saying you were voted on council, not because you were a cop, but because you're going to represent the people, so I have to listen to the people. And I've listened to the people, I've uh, spent my whole last two weeks doing so, and I do have a few concerns that I want to bring up to council. Number one, simple fact is, we don't dictate the RCMP at the federal level what to do or not to do. We can't tell them or whatever, but we could tell them to the fact that we're concerned for the health and safety of our community. When I made an oath to this office, I made sure that I follow certain ethics that I would protect the community and that I would listen to the community. Now the fact is, regulation, you're asking for the city to certain regulation of an illegal activity that's in place. I hate the word illegal because some of us, a lot of us, uh, support the fact for uh, medical marijuana and, and so forth, and it's been documented. Even Health Canada even endorsed it in a way that we have these so-called uh, legal federal dispensaries that they send it in the mail and so forth. What we have now and been largely affected in this province is many of them just opening up being compassionate clubs or being dispensaries, if you want to call them. Both of them are illegal. It's simple as it's black and white. It's what position is council on behalf of the city is willing to take. Well, I, for one, will not endorse anything that's known to me as being illegal. That's my code of ethics. Number two, regulations. Even if the city wanted to regulate this, how are we going to do it? Are we going to follow the example of the city of Vancouver and just put for nonprofit $1,000 for a license fee, for profit put $30,000 so prevent from those who can't afford it, defeats the purpose. But the thing is in regulations, what has in place with Health Canada is the fact that they actually regulate the product. I want to make sure what's going out there in this community, when it's legal, that the product would be safe and proper secured for our community. I'm thinking about the children. When Mr. Bertrand was here last week and actually showed me, showed me how it was done legally and so forth and uh, showed me the bottle of pill with the child resistant thing, I think that's great. And I think it will benefit a lot of people that are suffering from uh, certain sy symptoms that they find marijuana helps them. Even if the practitioners in this town don't endorse it, but if it helps them, so be it. What you do in your own home is your own business. But the thing is, when it start affecting outside your house, then it becomes city business. Now, am I endorsing the use of a marijuana for medical purpose? No. I've been a cop when I used to arrest people for one joint and spend four hours writing reports and then going to court on my days off costing taxpayers an amount of money. It was totally ridiculous. I support the fact that we regulate medical marijuana, but I don't want to put the cart before the horse. This needs to be properly regulated and it has to come at the federal level and also the food and drug agency has to be able to monitor this and all that. Now if you want to talk about our local and why I'm not supporting uh, the motion of uh, Councillor 
um, Nick Lennon, that I feel we should go with the option A given that, but I'll, I'll mention the motion after. And it's similar to yours, uh, Councillor Minions, but the fact is I still don't want to endorse the fact that we have an illegal activity in our town because it's, for me, it's against my code of ethics. I visited and I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Liu's mother, which is a great woman and she, uh, well, she told me she was his mother, so, but uh, showed me the place and everything and uh, it was great. I had a lot of questions, uh, but, you know, I think she took, you know, Dennis the old cop and all that always be against it. Nobody knows me. Nobody knows me. I don't have this cop ethics that I have throughout my life. I'm a human being just like everybody else and I know what's good for the community and what's bad and that's why I got elected. But I'm telling you, I was somewhat disappointed with the uh, dispensary in town. And I'll get to my point, Mr. Mayor, make this fast. It's the way people are going there. And first of all, I find the medical dispensary wording for the business that's in town or other cities, at which I haven't visited, but I visited the one in town, to be a bit of a, uh, let's say, of a foggy situation where it's misleading. To the fact that anybody could go in there, produce some ID, and we have a, uh, a copy of a code in conduct, which I totally respect. It shows the impairments and uh, how it affects with blood pressure. And it also states it did his due diligence by saying that it's against the law to possess. Where's the product coming from? I've heard rumors that he's prepared to say where the product is coming from. Uh, but the thing is, I'm getting back to the fact, wherever it's coming from, it's illegal because no federal agency uh, like uh, the one in Nanaimo that's recognized by Health Canada is allowed to dispense uh, marijuana, especially in that certain amount, anything over on your person 150 grams. But it all comes down to health and safety. And what I have, somebody actually going in there, mentioning uh, a disease, uh, which was a blood disorder disease, that uh, was not on the list of uh, this document, which his staff is trained to fill out before you become a member. Um, and there's no prescription for this uh, disease. And I don't want to say the disease because I don't want to point out the person that actually went out and spoke to me and had very big concerns. And this is a marijuana user and so forth, but his concern was, where is this coming from? My concerns is, again, safety and well-being. I show here a picture, and I'll show you real fast and pat it, pass it on. This is one of the products that was actually sold, and he did not need, he did not have a practitioner's letter of support, prescription, or nothing. As long as you're over 19 years of age and show ID. Now, I don't know if this was just a badly trained employee, or was it the regular regulations in, uh, the, uh, in the store. But he was able to obtain this product, an eighth, I believe, and uh, to the point that all he had to show is ID. Now, if Mr. Merritt, if you could show the picture, it shows it's pretty much in a, in a glad bag Ziploc, uh, unprotected. And I guess the brand that he took was Green Crack. So all you have on is a sticker that says the name of the company and green crack. And it has no warnings about side effects. It has no warnings about the THC levels, which is another five-hour talk, which I'm not going to get into because I don't want to bother you, but it's actually tested through uh, Health Canada to deal with this matter. But it has nothing of those warnings. So I do question the practices of uh, the... Uh, of the business in town and how they're dealing with it. Uh, I'm glad it brought more people into town, but uh, what kind of message are we trying to endorse? Uh, to me, it all comes down to public safety and health, and this is why I can't accept this motion to continue allowing this and let the RCMP do their own discretion. I'd rather have a ministry involved that will monitor, check, and check the quality of the product that's been given to our residents. 
no different than any meat at a butcher shop that's being inspected by a, a federal agency that we know what we're dealing with. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Thank you, Councilor McClellan. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I happen to agree, I guess, with most of what's been said here. The only reason I, I did presented this motion is uh, at the UBCM, the city of Vancouver came and asked the rest of the cities to support them in asking the federal and provincial government to do something, get off their duff, and control this properly, make it legal, illegal, and put some controls on it. They, they're in a situation with I don't know how many hundred or whatever uh, um, dispensaries. I guess they were first, probably because of their size and, and population makeup. And they're popping up all over, and they, they don't know what to do, so they asked for help and set them up. And a lot of us went to the mic and suggested they just try and zone it. We got no control. We can't, as a city, say this is medically good, medically bad. We can't do that. We can't even say it's for or against the criminal code. That's the RCMP's job. And if they shut them down, then we don't got to worry about it. If they don't shut them down, then we do have to worry about it. And right now in Port Alberni, there's at least three buildings open, ready to be filled, that are close to schools. And I want to tell you, when the days when it, not the days, we still got it. People who would be popping this junk out of their backyard, out of their basement, would go close to a school and off they would go. If there's some way we can stop that happening through the only power we have is zoning, that's what I would like to see, and that's what this is about. And that's all. I, I, I think we debated it forever, and I'm sure everyone's got an opinion, so. Councillor Alamany. Thank you. Um, just a few points, I guess, in response to, to Councillor Sauve. Um, I mean, I think, uh, Again, there, there's no argument that it's that it is illegal, uh, and and uh, and the RCMP uh, are the only ones that that can take care of it in a legal manner. Um, that said, um, you know we we have to be open and frank about what the the operation is. Uh, I certainly support medicinal marijuana and. And I don't much care uh, about recreational marijuana, um, but uh, but I think if we're we're open with ourselves, we know that the, that we medical is is really just uh, uh, selling recreational marijuana to to uh, the community. Um, and frankly, I don't care. That's fine. Um, it's all illegal anyway. <laughs> um, so it's either neither here nor there. Um, the issue is one of whether the community uh, has the tools to deal with it or not. The RCMP will do as they as they can, and and as they will. Um, and if, as Councillor McClellan said, uh, they come by and, and shut the place down for uh, whatever reason they they deem fit, that's that's fine under the law that we have now. Um, uh, we got a, a a late letter on the agenda from. Um, the uh, the neighboring business Flandangles, um, which I'm very glad to see because it's it's uh, uh, it's a shame it's not on the full agenda because it would be great for the the public to see it uh, now. But um, the last line is in closing. It appears that all of my fears were misplaced about the dispensary. Um, that's from uh, Mr. Washington. Um, from Flandangles, so uh, there's, <laughs> or sorry, Miss Washington, <laughs> sorry, Dan, um, but uh, that's uh, so that's I think a, a, an indication that there are a lot of, of worries in the community uh, and and well-founded worries, but uh, in the end, uh, even after just a week or two of being open, uh, many of those worries uh, disappear. Um, so that's that's something I think that's that's important to know. Um, I'd also like to to bring out the the, the example of uh, a neighbor of of mine uh, that uh, is a crack dealer, um, and they are always on the street uh, selling marijuana and who knows what else to. Uh, underage people or not underage people. I don't know. I've seen them on the street. But um, I bring it up to the RCMP, and, 
and they're very diligent. Um, but he's still there. Um, <laughs> so, and he's been there for many years and I know there's many, many more like him all over town. So, you know, this, this is an issue of, of, uh, what we as a city can control, um, you know, on, on, uh, a zoning perspective. And, uh, here we have a, a business that is opening, uh, and wants to be a part of the community. Um, and we have the opportunity to ensure that there are safeguards in place uh, that frankly are not in, pra in place for my neighbor, the crack dealer. Um, and I'd love to be able to uh, put more safeguards in place so that not only, um, you know, the neighbors of the dispensary are comfortable, uh, but the community at large has access if they choose uh, to marijuana in hopefully a more safe environment than what they have now. Hey, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess we've made it quite clear that it is illegal. Uh, I think my, one of my first concerns was that it was done under the wire and they were not required to do all the things that the merchants in this community have to do in order to get a business going in this town. It just came in and it started up. Um, my first thought again would be to, to pass a possible bylaw to impose the city tax and and then collect money and have it remitted to the city for improvements in their area. Um, Councillor uh, Elmy mentioned uh, the neighboring business, which my wife and I just recently purchased, and I spent most of yesterday up there, and um, the clientele seemed to be respectable. There, there, there wasn't, um, there wasn't uh, what you would see as a, I, I don't know what we stereotype as a user to be going into that building. It, they were they were pulling up in nice vehicles. They were going in. They were going out. Um, I'm really torn with it. Um, but like Councillor Silva says, it is illegal. But if we're going to live with it, uh, let's get some rules and regulations and 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 be positive with it. And like I say, I, I'd love to get a to collect some tax to do some improvements in the areas where these pieces of, where these places are going to show up. Okay. Councillor Sobe. Let's place some rules and regulations. Uh, how is the city going to place some rules and regulations to make sure the product is safe? Are we going to be hiring a lab assistant to make sure there are certain THC levels that are a certain thing? Are we going to make sure that, um, you know, our bylaw officer, is he, we only have one, we try to get another one, but that didn't pass. Is he going to be the one that's going to be monitoring all this? Uh, the, our taxpayers right now, we're, we're taxing them to the tilt that how are we going to regulate it? Just ask them for money and just keep a blind eye and and all that I agree it's a great thing all I'm saying is that it's it's let the federal government do its job let's hear what's gonna come by the land of the people that say okay this is it it's recreational free-for-all or are they gonna bring it down to the provincial level which is gonna be dealt with like alcohol then it'll be a provincial issue I'm saying all I'm saying is that I'm all for it. There's no problem. It's just I'd rather, if it's illegal right now, that he went too soon, he put the card before the horse, he should have waited till the law comes. I read a statement in the paper. It's true or untrue, I don't know. Liberal government got elected, so uh, having marijuana is legal now. So those type of comments just doesn't make sense. Uh, to be passing a law and setting regulations has to go through the... House of Commons debate, voted, goes to the Senate. It takes a while and then gets voted and it's made law or organized. All I say, let's just use, do not throw caution to the air and let it, the federal government do their job and they're going to be doing it. I'm just saying it's not the right time right now. And I just don't want to set a president that we got about three more waiting around. Next, next thing you know, we got them all popping around because now we're regulating it. All you have to do is say it's nonprofit, get a thousand bucks, and they could sell as uh, much as they want. I know there's a regulation and all that. 
but I just shown you today how the product is going out. You know, how do we know it's not going to fall and our children are going to find it or whatever? At least through the federal government had something in place that it was properly secured and properly distributed. All I'm saying, we should just wait for the federal laws to come down and see what decisions going to make before. Until then, it's illegal. Simple as that, and leave it to the police, which I believe is the uh, city planner's option number one that he put in place, but I'll get him to read it again, mm -hmm. that uh, pretty much we just leave it into the RSMP's matter. Now, is the RCMP going to be influenced by city council? Absolutely not. We're going to leave it, well, to myself, we're going to leave it up to the RCMP to decide what they want to do and all that. But at least I know they're monitoring the issue and work from there. But please, let's not start saying that the city could regulate it just because Vancouver does it and have all the resources and get the money. But the thing is, is what kind of message are we sending? Get it regulated, get, meant to, uh, get uh, Health Canada to get involved in here and put a safe product for people that are actually in need. And as if it's a safe place to get marijuana, I'll tell you right now, dispensary being safe or not, we don't know where it's coming from. Let's say it is safe. I'll tell you right now, the one that wants to use marijuana with my 27 years of experience, they'll go get it elsewhere where it's cheaper. Trust me. So I'll leave it to that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So, Council, um, I'm feeling the same way as Councillor Paulson and Councillor Sobe. It's for us as a council to, to presume that we can make a decision about this. We're not federal politicians. We're municipal politicians. And for us as municipal politicians to be placed in a position where we're thinking we're going to make a decision about this, about federal law, we're way advanced over what is anywhere within our area of jurisdiction. For us to make comment on this, for us to, we can comment all we want, but for us to make a decision about how, what the city's going to do, it's ridiculous. It isn't, it isn't in our mandate to do this. I think what we should be doing instead is urging the federal government to do the job that it was elected to do and change that law and have the regulations that go along with it and change that law as quickly as it can possibly change that law. Not put it off not put it aside, not refuse to deal with it. It needs to do the job that we expect it to do. But to expect us as a city to do their work for them makes zero sense to me. For us to take on that responsibility, that potential liability, why would we do that to our taxpayers? That doesn't make sense. There is nothing wrong with us waiting. There is nothing wrong with what people do in terms of their own personal consumption of marijuana. It's been this way for generations. So we don't need to make a decision tonight on this. We don't need to jump ahead of this. It's not going to make one whit of difference to what happens in this community anyway. So for people to expect us, or for us to expect us to make a decision about this, when it's totally outside of our area of responsibility, totally outside of our mandate, is completely wrong-headed. We're taking on authority that we don't have. Why would we do that? We've got enough other things to worry about. If Vancouver chooses to do that, Vancouver can choose to do that. If Nanaimo chooses to do something, Nanaimo can do that. But for us as a council, to take on this makes no sense to me. It doesn't it doesn't bring anything to us. We need to have a proper discussion as a city once the laws have changed. We need to have a proper discussion with the citizens of the city of Port Alberni. Where do you want to see it? How do you want to see it regulated? How do you want to see the zones? How should we be responding to this? So that's not to say we approve, disapprove, none of that kind of stuff. It's not in our mandate. It doesn't make sense for us to take it on. There are things that make sense for us. Roads, water, sewer, marijuana. That's not it. That's not for us. That's for a different level of government. And for those senior levels of government to expect that the municipalities are going to somehow solve their problems for them, well, that's like all the other things that they download on us. 
So that's not fair to expect us to do that. And frankly, it's not fair for the citizens of Port Alberni to expect us to make that decision. That isn't our responsibility. It is a federal responsibility right now. And until w they turn it on to somebody else, it still remains their responsibility. So we should be expecting our federal representatives to make decisions about this as soon as possible. And I know that that is one of the items that is on the agenda for the new Minister of Justice to be paying attention to as soon as possible. Let her do her job. Let her do her work. We don't need to do her work for her. We can comment when we have the opportunity. But we don't need to do her work for her. Let her do it. Let her change the law. Let her bring on the regulations that go with it. If it's something new, uh, Councillor Minions, great. Yes, it is. Um, I would just like to say that I feel zoning is a part of our mandate. Um, and I, I completely agree. This <coughs> should not be a municipal, um, you know, this shouldn't be on a municipal agenda, but it is a problem in our community, and we are going to have to deal with it regardless. And I really feel that um, we can wait, and it will probably just get worse and worse and worse by the time um, the federal government does something about it. So I would like to give ourselves the tools to regulate it as much as we can. Thank you. Councillor Sully. Uh, question is to Councillor Minions. I totally agree with you about regulating, zoning and so forth. But my question to you is that do we do that while it's still illegal or when it's preparing for the legal stage? I say we do it today because you know, a year from now when it's legal or five years from now or ten years from now, we will have lost control of the problem. We need to deal with it before it gets worse and not do nothing and ignore it. That would be my answer. All right, so on the motion um, that the Council for the City of Port Alberni direct staff to come back by the next regular council meeting with recommended zoning and operating conditions for medical marijuana dispensary, dispensing facilities in Port Alberni. Is that correct? Yes, that's best I can word it. And you'll notice medical marijuana dispensing is in quotations. I don't even think it's a proper word, but that's another story. Okay. And depending on how the motion is going to go, Mr. Mayor, I Second motion. Okay. So on the motion. So has it been seconded? It has been seconded. This question to the city. Um, with regards to an amendment, I, I would like to have um, legal opinion on this as well. Well, wh why don't we get in the motion? Let's, 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 Mr. Mayor, a, a motion to table would supersede it. Would need to be seconded. If, the, if I understand the amendment correctly, it would be to get a legal opinion in advance of the decision as part of the, yeah. as the report. Well, as part of the decision. Yes. I see. Okay. Yes. That would be um, perhaps most easily handled by an, a, a subsequent motion. Yes, I would okay. think so. And on this motion, Mr. Mayor, I would like if we could have the vote recorded, please. Okay, on the motion. All those in favor of the motion? No. Each councillor individually okay. how they vote. You're right. Thank you. On the motion, Councillor McClemon? Pro. Councillor Sobey? Against? Councillor Paulson? In favor. Councillor Minions? In favor. Councillor Alamani? In favor. Councillor Washington? In favor. And I'm against. And the motion passes. Okay, Councillor McClemon? I'd like to make a second motion, Mr. Mayor, to move the staff work with local businesses and the RCMP to come up with conditions and locations. The conditions could include off hour security product safety disclosure posted, age requirement to enter, suggest 19, but we don't have that authority, but it's good to put it in. Standalone dispensaries only, no coffee shop or other combination, and I think that's an important one. Must keep records of all suppliers prepared to give to the RCMP when they're asked. Okay, and, sir, seconder. And, and my th idea of this is, uh, it's, it's, it is what you were saying, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's outside of our jurisdiction but it does give us a reason to ask the RCMP to go in and shut a particular one down. They, the other towns where these have sh cropped up and uh, the RCMP have, and the p local police whichever they have 
haven't got the time or, or ability to to keep closing them down, but if there's somewhere the city is working on it specifically against, that might help. That's my only hope. And I don't want to be behind the eight ball like the other towns are. Maybe we'll get ahead of one once, not often, likely, but it was a try. Councillor Sobey? Uh, give you a legal opinion on this as for we have no right to ask the local business to give out all of his customers' uh, logistics to the RCMP unless the RCMP gets a search warrant. So I don't know how City Hall could ask for that type of uh, things to do. Well, if it's Im impossible, then it won't. No, it, it the motion is just a suggestion after the motion. Is so really your motion is move that staff work with local businesses and the RCMP to come up with conditions and locations. Yeah, period. and the conditions could include its errors. Uh, okay, so but, but really it ends at locations. Correct. Okay, and we have a seconder, Councillor Alleman. I'd just like to, to add, I guess, to the list of could conditions, um, although I, I would like to, to be a little more than that. But I would like to have the um, uh, the requirement of them being a nonprofit, uh, if they're a nonprofit, to still require a business license so that they're required to have a well, business that, license, that part, either, yeah. either one. More money, the better. Huh? <laughs> more so that we could... In effect, if they don't follow the conditions, then we can revoke their business license mm -hmm. um, legally. Sorry. Okay, any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, moving on. City Manager, financial planning process and schedule. The three late items that council should just acknowledge um, items 3 1, 3 2, and 3 3 from Chris Washington, JP Penny, and P. Bulwer. Sorry, there was a bit of noise. I didn't hear you. Thank you. Uh, council could just entertain a motion to receive those, Mr. Mayor. I move we receive them, Mr. Mayor. The three letters. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, yeah. City Manager, financial planning process and schedule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there a report provided from staff with respect to uh, the upcoming financial planning process requesting uh, direction from Council with regard to how you would like that, that process to look? Uh, as Council is aware, the Community Charter requires Council to adopt an annual financial plan bylaw in advance of our property tax bylaw, and it also requires that we undertake a a process of public consultation regarding uh, the financial plan before it's adopted. Um, in the report, I have outlined for Council um, what was undertaken in the prior year, 2015, with regard to the public input process um, and also provided um, a, a calendar that would show how that would unveil, if you like, with the beginning being the uh, first draft of the financial plan being received by Council at the December 14th regular meeting. Uh, staff are currently already working on a draft financial plan um, and, and we believe it can be uh, ready for Council and the public to see on the December 14th regular meeting. That would be followed by a series of presentations by uh, by both the city departments and by agencies that receive significant funding from the city. Uh, th those would occur in, uh, in mid-January, early to mid-January. Uh, financial plan uh, presentation, uh, an overall presentation by the mayor and by the city manager with um, information available to the public uh, would be hosted in late January. Um, the city would post information with regard to the financial plan on our on our both our Facebook page and website, as well as um, host a um, public input survey with regard to the financial plan uh, as part of as part of the input process. Uh, we propose to, to receive all of the public input by early February, um, and have council uh, discuss and provide direction to staff with regard to that input. Uh, give direction uh, to staff for changes to be made to the financial plan by mid-March uh, with the introduction of the financial plan in late March for, for, uh, for bylaw purposes and adoption in early April. 
which provides us the uh, required time frame to adopt the plan in advance of our tax rate bylaw. Also attached to that report, Mr. Mayor, is um, something that Council had requested that we undertake for 2016's process, and that was a more reader-friendly version to complement um, the standard uh, worksheet document for the budget. And, and what's attached is only a, a small portion, but it's, it's attached for uh, input from Council on the format, and that uh, we have included only the one department, um, RCMP, uh, including the format that we would propose um, to include for all departments, of course, um, as part of the draft plan. Uh, and we are, would very much like input from Council on how that could be improved, things that are missing, um, things that you would like to see changed with regard to that, and it's still very much open to be, um, to be amended uh, in advance of uh, preparing that plan. So I would be uh, pleased to answer any questions from Council and pleased to receive any direction from Council about how you would like the financial planning process to move forward in 2016. Okay, uh, Councillor McClellan. <coughs> she had her hand up like this. Oh, I, I could see your hand, <laughs> but I could see yours first, so <laughs> I'll, I'll let her go first. Councillor Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Thank you for this um, updated format of the budget. I think it looks very good. Um, one thing that I would like to see added to it um, are the previous year's budget and actual. So um, I think that that's something that, at least for me, has always been challenging to compare. In order to compare what we spent versus what we budgeted in each um, you know, category, you have to look at two separate 60-page you know, documents. So I think it would be helpful to um, show, you know, were we over or under budget on the same document? But I think this looks fantastic, and it's, um, it will be a huge improvement just as, you know, an addition to what we're already putting out. Um, in addition to that, um, and more on track of the schedule, um, I think it would be very helpful to have um, maybe the council meeting before we get the draft financial plan, the first draft. Um, and I'm not sure what the date on that is, but whatever the council meeting is before, if we could have um, a report on last year's budget items and where they're at and if they've been completed, if they're still outstanding, where we're at. Um, and essentially what I'm looking for is the items that were on the spreadsheet, so the additional things that we voted to implement. Um, what's done, what's not, and if it's not, then where are we at and when can we expect it to be done? So I don't know if that's something we could add to... Um, that schedule um, to get an update on those things. Um, and then on the actual draft financial plan, um, the same as kind of I mentioned with the updated format, maybe we could add where we always show the current years or the previous years um, actual dollars spent, we could maybe add another column that shows what the budget was to put that into context of whether it was over or under for every line. Um, I'd imagine that information is easily available, um, but again, I think it would be really helpful for people to see if we are going over, or under, and on what costs without having to compare the two documents. It would also be useful because sometimes the money that's spent is not necessarily spent, and I'm sure it happens rarely, but it might not necessarily be spent in that particular year, but is maybe spent in a, a subsequent year. So that could be, be good information to have as well. Like where the money is right Yeah. That's some quite comment I, think, I was going to make. So I think it's, it's, it's sort of just yeah. a, a, yeah. a little bit of a refinement or addition yeah, to much. what you're asking yeah. for. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Lee, there are some challenges that occurred to me and it, uh, immediately are the actual number for 2015 will not be available until well into the process, probably until after we've adopted our 20. Um, 2016 budget. The, yeah. the, uh, an estimate of what we think we're going to spend um, could be provided, I suspect. Uh, but, but the actual number as for the audited financial statement would not be available at the time we're doing our budget planning. Uh, but certainly we can show the budget for the prior year and, an, and perhaps an estimate of what we think the actual amount is likely to be. I think that would be fine. Um, an estimate is a great start. And then when the actual numbers are available, maybe we could update that document just so that our financial plan shows what we spent um, yeah. versus what we budgeted for. There might also be uh, places where some money has been spent um, mm -hmm. that maybe we have record of. So if there's, a, if there's an ability to say 
uh, you know, this amount of money has been spent on the item, uh, and there's an estimate on the total. Now we're now we're really getting into the <laughs> nitty gritty, but Mr. Brett, my understanding was it should be a simpler, more reader friendly yeah. version. Uh, and so the more columns that we add, and the more detail that we add, the less simple and reader friendly it becomes. Um, and but I'm open to your direction, of course. Just be forewarned that you're going to be asked these questions anyway. So, you're just <laughs> okay. and we're completely happy to answer the detailed questions uh, when they arise. Okay. Um, is there, are there any other comments? So, Councillor Washington, are you uh, prepared to make that motion? Mayor, <coughs> the Council for City of Port Alberni direct staff to implement a five-year financial plan development process for 2016, generally as, out, as, as outlined in the City Manager's Memo to Council dated November 9, 2015. Seconder? Second, Mr. All those in favour? Carried. Does that help you, City Manager? Yes, thank you. Clear as mud? Okay, uh, current status uh, report uh, has been, is available, We've looked at it, it's uh, I think a three page report. Uh, any, well first off before we talk about it, uh, Councillor Paulson, do you want to uh, make the motion to receive that? Uh, that the current status report be received. Is there a seconder? Are there any questions, Councillor Minions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just curious where we're at with the kitchen and yard waste options without the ACRD. We were going to get a report. It's listed as a high priority. Um, I think it's from August. Maybe I might be wrong on that. But just curious um, where we're at with that report. Um, the engineer can respond with regard to where the ACRD is at. I know that they, they have been having meetings in with regard to updating their solid waste management plan and that we will be watching that very closely with regard to how we would um, pre uh, re recommend to council we move forward or not move forward with a uh, kitchen waste uh, and yard waste collection program. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We did have a meeting at the ACRD recently. Councillor uh, Alamany was there with me and, uh, and there is a document pending and I'm, and I'm thinking uh, it would be premature to do anything uh, in advance of that, so if that item could could carry forward a little bit further, uh, perhaps Mr. Alamini can uh, speak more to it. But uh, I, I think with that information, it will provide some background on on the um, on the service that we're talking about. Yeah, just to, to expand on that, I guess um, at the meeting uh, we received a uh, uh, we received a report on on the the possibilities of a composting facility in the, in the ACRD and, and various options around it. Uh, and the, uh, the, the conclusions of the, of the committee was that uh, there, there weren't, uh, I would say, uh, enough, there wasn't enough data available to justify the cost that was currently in front of the committee. Um, so there was, there was a thought that we were, we were going to go ahead and, and do some more basically some more research on it. Um, there is a lot of uh, a lot of questions that are still unanswered and the the, the uh, author of the report I, I think was, was mm -hmm. not comfortable yet recommending a, uh, uh, a way forward um, at this time. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you fair enough. Anything else, Council? Uh, just point out, Councillors, that uh, item 29, for example, says uh, uh, it's not a strategic priority uh, use of report on the use and potential regulation of drones. So there is an attempt to try and get um, direction to uh, to staff uh, ensure that it fits within our strategic priorities. So that's why that particular comment uh, is there. Um, we want to try and make sure that whatever we choose to do um, reinforces what our, our strategic plan is. Um, and if there is if there is nothing in that green box, it's because it's not clear as to how it fits within the strategic plan. Okay, so then on the uh, on the motion to receive it, uh, unless there's other points, all those in favor, carry. Thank you. Um, we have. Uh, <coughs> 
from the planning department. Uh, Mr. Smith, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the majority of items are coming before council uh, on this agenda, but I'd be certainly pleased to any answer any questions that council may have. Um, council, any questions? No, it looks good. You made a neat up from last year. Certainly, the number of development applications are quite a bit ahead of where we were uh, last year, yes. And just uh, that the residential building units, uh, 37, is that because of the Uchuklisit building? Yeah, that's the, the second phase of their building permit, and so that's uh, why you see that big spike in multifamily there, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's good to see the increase that we like. Okay, thank you, City Planner. Uh, uh, Councillor Alamano, you want to make that motion? I move to receive the report. Second. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And from the engineering department, we have uh, uh, a great report, uh, complete with pictures. Uh, anything you need to uh, make sure that council is particularly, that needs to be brought to our attention, uh, Mr. Cecil? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd, I'd like to point out the obvious that, uh, you know, two of our major projects are pushing up against the, uh, the weather window that we have. Um, we're scrambling paving right now. Uh, these, this is something that we're, we're aiming to do, and, but, uh, and, and I suspect we will be able to get our lifts down before it gets too wet. But uh, it is in a very, very unusual year uh, to be paving at this time of year. And uh, we're fortunate. Um, the, thing, the way things unfolded, we... Uh, uh, we did find ourselves in this situation. So I guess I'd like to um, acknowledge the, the public's patience for the uh, uh, disruption on not only Argyle and Kingsway, but on, on Third Avenue. And uh, I, I do foresee that this, this will be tidied up uh, shortly in, in a matter that will be um, uh, more acceptable. Of course, there will be parts of uh, both projects that will carry on in the new year, but will be substantially complete uh, definitely on the Dry Creek project. Okay, thank you. Um, and Mr. Cison, I did go and see the pool on, on Dry Creek, mm. and it's very impressive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. complete with trees and everything. It's a nice addition. Uh, city Manager? Mr. Mayor, if I might be indulged, can I ask the City Engineer a question? Uh, with respect to the water treatment plant at Bainbridge, um, uh, Guy, when would we be able to have the uh, grand opening ceremony to unveil that to Council and any public that would like to attend? Uh, thank you, Mr. Watson. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do this in the early part of December. Um, there were a couple of little items that we wanted to iron out, and I believe uh, we're well on our way to that. Uh, we're putting a sign together as well. So I think things will be t tidier and uh, more presentable for uh, early December, Mr. Mayor. Looking forward to it. Yes, we, we all are. Uh, Councillor Paulson. Just um, very briefly, uh, we, I think everybody's aware that we've gone away from uh, commercial garbage pickup. And uh, just your basic impression on how that transition has gone and uh, our former customers uh, being well served. And, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's, 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 it's done. It's, yeah, yeah, it, it's done. Uh, it, it went surprisingly well. Um, uh, we have to recognize that our, our, our public works clerks uh, were very busy uh, with the administration of, of uh, some of our customers. Um, our finance people also had to manage the accounts. Um, physically, things, things went well. Um, the, uh, we wor we've worked well through this little uh, transition. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get more information from our crews, but I, I, th I think it was uh, a quite a quite a smooth transition. Um, I haven't heard any any negative uh, feedback. Yeah, I've, I've had no feedback from mm -hmm. from commercial customers directly mm -hmm. to me. I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if something came to you. Okay, yeah. Councillor Sobe, you had a question. Uh, just one question. Uh, this major project we got going on on Third Avenue, and uh, you know all the zigzags and all that. Uh, do we have anybody that monitors that site during the weekend or when they're not on site? The, the issue I'm trying to get at is 
there was major potholes that were there, but they were left for a couple of days, which personally cost me a couple of shocks on my vehicle, so it was pretty bad to the thing I was going to fill them myself. But is there a project, is there a project manager that's there that actually checks out these job sites before they leave to make sure it's... Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, we do, we do. And uh, in fact, I, I got to give our public works guys uh, credit because it was at the very end of the day last Friday that uh, we did a sweep by there and uh, could see that the rain was punching out these, these crossings quicker than uh, the general contractor would have even anticipated. So it was, it was our forces that uh, tidied up those, those crossings uh, at the end of the day on Friday, which, uh, which uh, put them in a, in a, in a state that it, it did carry them through the weekend. Uh, you know, we did have the, the contractor back the next day. Um, I, I, I do recognize that there is uh, some potholes there, but I, I think we did quite well, actually, in, in light of the project and in light of other construction projects that I see in different communities. Uh, but I, I, I do want to stress, the, you know, the appreciation of the public's patience uh, for those uh, speed bumps, so to speak. Tell that to my truck. Thank you. Um, and it's a Councillor Allen. Slow down. It's a speed limit. Um, just, I, I thought maybe uh, I, I got a question earlier today. You already know, uh, uh, engineer, that uh, there was some concern about discoloration in the water over the weekend from maybe from the rains. Maybe if you could repeat your uh, as mm -hmm. best as you could uh, mm -hmm. uh, the information around Bainbridge Lake and that stuff. Certainly. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I think we all recognize we have two water supply sources. Uh, the China Creek is a flowing creek uh, and Bainbridge Lake is, is an impounded lake and, and they, uh, they do provide the water for our, for our uh, drinking water system. And, and they're different in that um, the, the lake has um, a catchment area there where the water slows down. So th there is a different character in that water and the way I describe it is uh, organics. So, and, and that can add to discoloration, but it, it really is a minor particular element in the uh, water quality parameters that uh, we deal with. And uh, I think it is in, in different shades that we will see uh, the Bainbridge Lake water in our, in our bathtubs, for instance. Um, and during the winter, I think we all recognize perhaps there's a slight odor to that. It, it really is it, nearly imperceptible, but that, that goes to speak to, you know, the quality of both sources, you know, that they really are um, uh, quality sources and they do meet our drinking water parameters uh, most certainly. But um, it is interesting how people do observe that and, you know, we're really proud to be able to explain the, the nuances between the two. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was asked to ask Mr. Cisson, um the excavation in front of the Smitty's restaurant in Lower Third, was that part of the Dry Creek plan or was that something you discovered unexpectedly? Uh, which particular? Uh, just just right in front of Smitty's there where, there, where the, it was all oh, dug up and... Certainly. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah th that is um, uh, linked to our Dry Creek flood protection project. It is, uh, it is an extension of, of, this, of the sewer system um, on each side of, of the Dry Creek Flood Protection Program. So it, it, is a, it, it is a good piece of infrastructure that was replaced, needed to be replaced, and uh, was replaced well. Okay. Perfect. You know, I, I think we need to really acknowledge that the businesses in that part of Third Avenue, well, they knew it was coming, have still mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. gone through a lot of uh, mm -hmm. sort of financial uh, challenges uh, during, the, during the course of this project and really thank them for mm -hmm. their uh, mm -hmm. understanding and their willingness to, uh, to just hang in there until we got it completed. It's, I mean, it's unavoidable, but still we really need to acknowledge those mm -hmm. businesses there and, mm -hmm. and uh, what they've gone through mm -hmm. over the last number of months. So. Kingsway and Harbour Key as well. Kingsway and Harbour Key as well, yeah, and they're mm -hmm. continuing to do that. But we know it's all for the, you know, the, 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 the improvement of the long-term benefit of everybody in the community. So, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, so, Councillor McClellan, are you prepared to make that motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I move the Council City of Port Alberni accept the report from the City Engineer. All those in favor? Carried, okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, we're on 
to uh, bylaws. Um, part G. Um, from the, the Advisory Planning Commission, uh, there are quite a number of, uh, of, of motions that are going to be made, uh, Council, related to these bylaws. That's part of the process that we need to go through, uh, related to uh, Bird Street, Cherry Creek Road, um, primarily. Um, so the first development application uh, on 3333 Bird Street. Uh, Councillor Allen, are you prepared to make those that motion, those motions one at a time? For the City of Port Alberni, proceed with a map amendment to the official community plan, Schedule A, land use map to change the designation of Lot G, District Lot 48, Alberni District, Plan VIP 68122, located at 3333 Bird Street from parks and open space and future residential to parks and open space and residential. I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Carried? That council for the City of Port Alberni proceed with a map amendment to the Schedule A zoning bylaw map to rezone Lot G, District Lot 48, Alberni District Plan VIP 68122, <coughs> located at 3333 Bird Street from FD Future Development to P2 Parks and Recreation and RR1 Rural Residential. All those in favor? Carried. That as part of the development process, the applicant be required to complete a preliminary layout approval letter for a proposed subdivision from the City of Port Alberni's approving officer, and that as part of the subdivision process, the drainage ditch be piped and leveled. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. And then on the development application for 4905 Cherry Creek Road. I'm going to take a drink of water first. <laughs> <laughs> You've got lots. We have four minutes to do it, and so keep going. <laughs> uh, that council for the City of Port Alberni proceed with a map amendment to the official community plan, Schedule A, land use map to change the designation of Lot 1, District Lot 14, Alberni District Plan VIP 86825, located at 4905 Cherry Creek Road from Highway Commercial to Industrial. All those in favor? Carried. That council for the City of Port Alberni proceed with a map amendment to the official community plan, Schedule B, Development Permit Areas Map to change the designation of Lot 1, District Lot 14, Alberni District Plan VIP 86825, located at 4905 Cherry Creek Road from Development Permit Area Number 2, Highway Commercial, to Development Permit Area Number 3, Industrial. I'll second that, Mr. All those in favor? Carried. And that council for the City of Port Alberni proceed with a map amendment to the Schedule A zoning bylaw map to rezone Lot 1, District Lot 14, Alberni District Plan VIP 86825, located at 4905 Cherry Creek Road from C4 Highway Commercial to M1 Light Industrial. All those in favor? Carried. Now, Councillor Alamani, now that we've done those two development applications, what did we just approve? This is the test. Just just a quick overview. We know, yeah. but the city may not. Sure. So uh, the Bird Street property is a subdivision for uh, what uh, we could call the, the orchard up at the top of Bird Street. Um, so there's going to be a development uh, or a, a subdivision there uh, on that land. Uh, and most importantly, the third um, motion about uh, ditching and leveling uh, was something that came out of the, the planning commission uh, concerned about the narrowness of the roads there uh, and uh, what might be done to, to help traffic flow as that development proceeds in that area. Um, and the Cherry Creek Road uh, subdivi or development application is for a new um, we call it light industrial park um, that the uh, the proponent is is proposing in that area that'll have multiple businesses uh, behind uh, uh, the F Alberni Mall. Um, so good. Okay, good little thing. So it'll be good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, and now, Councillor Alamani, now we get to uh, change the official community plan. Yes, uh, that official community plan amendment number 17, 333 
Bird Street Harris, bylaw number 4889, be now introduced and read a first time. All those in favor? Carried. That official community plan amendment number 17, 3333, Bird Street Harris, bylaw number 4889, be read a second time. All those in favor? Carried. And now that the zoning map amendments that go with it? That zoning map amendment number 9, 3333, Bird Street Harris, bylaw number 4890, be now introduced and read a first time. All those in favor? Carried. That zoning map amendment number 9, 333, Bird Street Harris, bylaw number 4890, be read a second time. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. <coughs> and now for Cherry Creek Road. That official community plan amendment number 18, 4905, <coughs> Cherry Creek Road, complete contracting, bylaw number 4891, be now introduced and read a first time. I'll All those in favor? Carried. That official community plan amendment number 18, 4905, Cherry Creek Road, complete contracting bylaw number 4891, be read a second time. Second All those in favor? Carried. That zoning map amendment number 10, 4505, Cherry Creek Road, complete contracting bylaw number 4892, be now introduced and read a first time. Second All those in favor? Carried. That zoning map amendment number 10, 4505, Cherry Creek Road, complete contracting, bylaw number 4892, be read a second time. All those in favor? Carried. And then uh, we're setting a public hearing for uh, four bylaws, uh, which are required to, in order to go to a public hearing. That official community plan amendment number 17, 333, Bird Street, Harris, bylaw number 4889, zoning map, Amendment number 9, 333 Bird Street, Harris, bylaw number 4890. Official community plan amendment number 18, 4905 Cherry Creek Road. Complete contracting bylaw number 4891. And zoning map number no amendment number 10, 4505 Cherry Creek Road. Complete contracting bylaw number 4892. Be advanced to a public hearing on Monday, November 23rd, 2015 at 6 p.m in the City Hall Council Chambers. All those in favor? Carried. Very good, Councillor mm -hmm. Allen. I'm taking more. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's now time for a recess. Uh, declare a 10 minute recess and we're back uh, uh, about 17 minutes to nine.
Young Professionals one? No. The number three one. Okay. All right. Welcome back, Council. Recess always clears the chamber. <laughs> uh, under correspondence for action, the first item is uh, from the young professionals of the Alberni Valley. Uh, we have a letter dated October 30th of this year requesting Council's assistance in transporting, storing, and installing bike racks made of industrial parts uh, and housed at Catalyst Paper. So, Councillor Minions, would you like to make that motion? That the letter dated October 30th, 2015 be received and Council for the City of Port Alberni direct staff to assist the young professionals of Alberni Valley in the transition, storage and eventual installation of bike racks in Port Alberni with locations to be determined in consultation with the city and cycling community. Is there a seconder? Any discussion? All those in favour? Carried. And from the Alberni Valley Chamber of Commerce, we have a letter, letter dated October 30th of this year requesting council support in the proposal from the Alberni Valley Chamber of Commerce to host an industrial triathlon in 2017. And uh, Councillor Minions, would you like to make that motion? That the letter dated October 30th, 2015 from the Alberni Valley Chamber of Commerce requesting council support on the proposal to host an industrial triathlon in 2017 be received and Council for the City of Port Alberni support the concept in principle and await further details of the event. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Councillor McClemon? Yeah, it sounds like a, a good thing, Mr. Mayor, and uh, if we're waiting for more details, uh, I think that's probably the best way. Otherwise, we would have asked that we could have the uh, manager, Chamber of Commerce, come and explain it to us whether m mills are running against mills or whatever here, but. Uh, Industrial triathlon sounds pretty hard for an old guy, so see what happens. I'll, I'll be particularly interested when we find out who the, uh, the sponsor or sponsors are, because that will be an important uh, piece. That's the most important um, part. It looks, uh, did you have a question or are you prepared no, to No, I, I, I was going to until, Okay. I, I think we'll just wait until we okay. get more information. Uh, any further discussion, Council? All those in favor? Carried. And from Port Alberni Junior Hockey Society, Councillor, Min Councillor Paulson is de declaring a conflict. Um, we have a request from the Port Alberni Junior Hockey Society for the city's commitment to complete their uh, office expansion project. Um, we have a motion there. Uh, Councillor Sobe, are you prepared to make that motion? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, the email dated October 30th, 2015, requesting the city commitment to complete the Port Alberni Junior Hockey Society's office expansion project be received and referred to staff to identify the scope and cost of outstanding work prior to the, the decision. Second, Mr. Mayor. Is there any discussion, Councillor McClemon? Mr. Mayor, uh, we do have one of the uh, proponents still in the audience, and I was wondering if maybe he could explain a bit better exactly what they're looking for here. My understanding is they're, they're not looking for any money, so I'm wondering what the costs are, but I may be misunderstanding. So I, if we could just find that out before we put staff to a lot of work. Okay, Mr. Cole. Thanks very much. Um, and this time, be succeed. There's a project from my presentation earlier, and there's a budget that you have, uh, you might want to take a look at. If for anybody who doesn't remember, that was, the, that was the blimp, the little blimp office on the side of the building. I don't know if you can scan through. That's what it looked like uh, <clears throat> last year at this time uh, during our lottery draw. This is uh, it as of today. Uh, and when you look at it from the street, if we have another view, uh, if you go back to the street and look at it, it really complements the building. It ties it all in together, the entrance and everything else. Now, there are two things. Back in December uh, last year, we asked in the project uh, outline with community forest funds, we asked uh, that the city consider closing in the last little bit of their existing roof line. Not, uh, and you might have one more picture of that. Uh, keep coming. Uh, da -da, one more. There. That section there, that's the only part that will still be exposed uh, when you get out of your vehicle at the handicap parking or at the Bulldog's office and to get into the main entranceway. And we're wondering if the city would consider uh, doing something to enclose that 
that roof area there, so it's a complete uh, closed walkway to the entrance of the facility. <clears throat> I think that was, it was sort of uh, committed in a letter uh, that I have a copy of here a year ago uh, in December, and I hope that the city will consider doing that. Number two, uh, I think there's a budget there. Um, and do you have a copy of our budget? Bring it up. Um, our, we are uh, just over halfway through our, uh, our, our funds and our budget. Uh, I'm dealing tomorrow with the roofer. It's really interesting that the people have given, a lot of the contractors have given us substantial discounts or done stuff at cost or below cost. Some of the installations have been done at no charge whatsoever. Uh, and it's really nice. We will quantify that. <clears throat> Our original budget was $120,000. We asked Community Forest for $95,000. We were granted $80,000. If you roll down on the budget now, you'll see that we are sitting, I think there's still about uh, uh, 40, 40, what are we, where are we at? We've got about $40,000 of the 80,000 left, but we have bills to come in and we have a, a fair bit of completion to do. What we wanted was uh, the city to consider some of their uh, crew to possibly do a little bit of the finish work in the office um, with some of the Colson cedar and some other material that we have and or uh, the detail around the fireplace, the gas fireplace, which has, has to be changed. It's cutting into brick and mortar and, uh, and stuff in your, inside your building, not in our office. We thought it might be more appropriate if it was done and it might also suit uh, your QP and union workers better if we weren't in messing inside the building. Uh, so we thought you might consider uh, a couple of those ideas, a couple of those parts of the project. Uh, it would also help us support. Uh, the more dollars we have left at the end, the better display uh, features we can have for our merchandise and other stuff as you go through the office. That will be the thing that, when we come to the end of our budget, those will be the thing details that won't be taken care of if we run out of money. Thank you. Anything else, Council? Councillor Sove? Um, I know we've we've helped out the uh, Bulldog organization in the past and all that, um, you know, with the ice time and so forth. Uh, and this is your total budget that you showed us tonight. That's the building the building project budget. Building, total project. building project budget. Okay, yeah. but yeah. Um, we didn't have any prior commitments for us to do this work. You're just asking us to actually provide man hours, which is going to come to money. Uh, to uh, finish this project, am I right? <clears throat> to do some finishing details, not commitment to okay. complete. Do you the have project. an estimate of what we're talking about in man hours, or we just we just wanted to work that out with city staff okay. uh, if they could if they want to do the fireplace part of the project. At one point, we asked them. We had a five thousand dollar gate door quote for our gate door. We negotiated that down to seventeen hundred and ninety five dollars, and we have right. paid for that. It's the connector between our building, our office, and, and your building. We want it to be featured. We have McLean Mill uh, rough cut for wood that's going to uh, encase that and make it look uh, uh, really good. We have to meet all code in that going into the building fire and everything else. So, But there are some things that the city staff uh, and city workers might be able to do okay. more effectively than our so contractor. So pretty, pretty much the motion is asking for sending our staff to get an estimate and see. Yeah, what we're and see if, if there's something we can do together as partners uh, in the finish of this project. I think it'd be really great for the community. I'd like to see. Uh, if had some mentioned possibly QP 118 might even want to contribute and get a higher. They're on our they're on our founder donors and leaders board. They might want to move up a level. A few of the contractors are moving up from leaders to founders or from donors to leaders on our recognition. Final thing is our recognition wall. We haven't designed it yet. I know there's plans within the multiplex and your staff for your recognition wall to be relocated. Okay. We may be able to just work together on this and do it right one t the first time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Okay. Anything else? I didn't ask you my question. Okay. Uh, Councillor Newman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just clarification on the motion that we're voting for tonight is just essentially to get a report to find out how much this is going to cost. Exactly. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Or if it can be done in kind or yeah. Yeah. Okay. thank you. All right. In all those in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. Uh, we're on to part I proclamations. The Minister of uh, Children and Family Development. Um, um, we have an email dated the end of October requesting that the month of November be proclaimed as Adoption Awareness Month. Uh, Councillor Washington, are you prepared to make that motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The email is dated 
dated October 30, 2015, from the Minister of Children and Family Development, requesting November 2015 be proclaimed as Adoption Awareness Month in Port Alberni be received, and this month proclaimed as requested. A seconder. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Carries. And then, uh, City Clerk, we have some uh, correspondence for information. Uh, could you please give us the overview on that? few items, a letter from the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure advising of an important initiative the provincial government has undertaken to support transit services in BC. The BC Professional Firefighters Association responds to a document regarding the provision of emergency medical services provided by the City of Delta Fire Department. BC Salmon Farmers Association has sent two publications regarding salmon aquaculture in British Columbia. And the Ministry of Finance, Gaming Policy and Enforcement advises of the $128,120 payment to the city representing casino revenue for the period July 1st to September 30th. And the Director of Finance has provided a cover report um, detailing where those funds are allocated. Thank you. This item one to four be moved. Seconded. Received. Okay. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And I do have a report uh, from in camera. Uh, the October 26th uh, in camera uh, council passed a resolution uh, approving the transfer of uh, Teresa Kingston to the position of director of community services. This new position is to encompass the duties of the vacant position of director of parks, recreation and heritage and will also include the community development function uh, Teresa will begin officially in this role on November 15th. A news release announcing this change was issued on October 29th. And that brings us to council reports. First report is the mayor's report. For four days, she was the most famous dog in Port Alberni. <laughs> She's back home. I made sure before I came to council meeting tonight that I shut her up safely in her in her house and uh, whenever we leave the property for any extended period of time she gets shut up safely in her house and the other day when we were away uh, over to the other side I'd shut her up safely in her house and I received a phone call saying Mr. Rattan, Bella's been seen in Southport. Phew, it wasn't her but anyway. Uh, Went to uh, the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance Summit in Nanaimo, uh, great context. Uh, it was good to get a perspective on our current uh, economic issues for the island and how they uh, apply to the city of Port Alberni. Uh, I also attended the, uh, the North Island uh, Regional Advisory Council for, uh, for ICE-T. Um, it's related to funding initiatives, uh, many of which uh, come to the city of Port Alberni and our region and certainly can help us. Um, I'd like to announce council that our, or remind you that our backyard burn is over as of uh, last night. So if you happen to have something dry in the backyard and it's the approved size, uh, you may set it on fire as of today. Um, I attended the flag raising here at City Hall for the Legion for Remembrance Day. Uh, and that was uh, last week, and uh, we have our ceremony on Wednesday. Uh, also went to the open house at the Nanaimo Airport, and it was not only to explain the, the expansion at the airport and some proposals, but it also was to talk about expanded service, which is a direct flight from Nanaimo to Edmonton. Um, and uh, I had an interview with a... John Paul II student uh, about alcohol use in the city. It was a very interesting uh, project for a, for a grade seven student. Um, on the weekend, I attended the uh, Pacific Salmon Foundation dinner and auction, and uh, happy to say I bid on and was a successful bidder for a four hour sockeye guided trip. Um, No, it's one of his competitors, probably. <laughs> but he was there. Um, I, that, I, had to, I had to pay for that one. I didn't win any of the other things, but it was a great meal nonetheless. Uh, thanks to 
uh, Smitty's. And uh, Council, just to remind you uh, that there is a special announcement of uh, significant economic importance uh, that will be announced at the airport uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So if you're interested in attending, uh, I urge you to go. Uh, and that's my report, and I move that it be received. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And from the ACRD, um, since uh, Councillor McClemon wasn't able to be there, um, we uh, met with uh, local representatives from our um, medical community uh, uh, to discuss medical issues, uh, particularly um, retirements and, uh, and staffing issues. Um, I also want to report to Council that uh, there was a letter of support uh, to the Ministry of Transport and Highways uh, um, to the, and also to the, um, the head office for, for uh, I guess it's budget, um, because there was a concern Coombs Country Candy couldn't get by on the, on the uh, dedicated old highway there, and it worked. Those, those vehicles, U-Haul vehicles are off the, off the road, so that I'm sure they're satisfied. Um, the uh, ACRD <coughs> purchased a, a truck for their uh, building inspection, um, and uh, also the the regional district passed a motion of concern uh, for the rapidly escalating costs to taxpayers of the Vancouver Island Regional Library. Uh, over the next four years. And that mirrored the, the, the <coughs> motion that we passed as a city. And uh, that's my, my report from the regional district. I move that that one be received. Second, Mr. Mayor. All those in favor, carried. Now we're on to uh, <coughs> councillors' reports. Uh, let's start with you, Councillor McClemon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I'll be very short. Um, most of my time since the last council meeting was spent uh, in Singapore and tai Taiwan and uh, had a real enjoyable holiday. Came back last week and got over jet lag a few days later and uh, hoping to attend the uh, uh, news release tomorrow as well as the remembrance service at ADSS. So I have to figure out how to juggle that and remember November the 11th is only two days away, and the services at Glenwood Center. Please be there. And Councillor Sobey? Um, too much stuff to say, so I'll keep it down to a few. Uh, tw on the uh, 27 Continuing Care Society meeting, uh, mentioned uh, the need, uh, you know, through their dealing with their matters with the society. But the actual resident council is raising funds. Uh, they're in desperate need of a new bus. And uh, pretty much it's a shout out to the big businesses. If there's any way you can help, it would be much appreciated. Um, also, uh, on November 3rd, I was uh, being a representative of the Continuing Care Society. I attended the fine dining at the Fur Park. So I'll take advantage of any nice home cooked meal. So I attended there, and um, it was well received, and uh, I really enjoyed myself. I also participated in the uh, alcohol use in Port Alberni project with the schools, and uh, dealt with that. Um, I dealt with many complaints uh, during the week about uh, uh, business licenses and so forth, and. And after visiting with uh, Pat Deacon when we, uh, or city develop, um, <clears throat> when we went and visit all the stores and so forth and seeing empty stores and I'm starting to get a greater, bigger picture with all these complaints and how the regional district don't need a business license, but they're operating businesses out of there and it's affecting the businesses or locally and all that. Anyways, it's up for discussion. I brought the issue up to uh, to our economic developer, uh, Pat Deacon's office, and I'm looking forward to meeting him to discuss this further. And uh, that'll be my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and Councillor Paulson. I'll try and keep it brief, but there is one thing I wanna talk about that is actually rearing its head and I'm becoming a spokesperson for it. Um, 
October Youth Advisory Committee, um, October 22nd, the AV Learning Council, which I find is a, is a great working council uh, dealing with uh, education and secondary education. Um, I missed the last council meeting. I was in Toronto, and I'm, a, I'm part of a um, national um, Canada registry for people who have hereditary uh, cholesterol. It's called uh, FH, and I call it, that's familiar, familial hypercholesterol. And here I'm going to give you some facts. And you I'll only keep it have brief. A maximum of I'll 10 keep minutes, it brief. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I have five points here. One in 300 people in our country are living with um, hereditary cholesterol. Only 10% are actually diagnosed. Um, familial hypercholesterol runs in families. If you have FH, every member of your immediate family has a 50% chance of having FH. If the FH gene is inherited from both parents, it leads to a very rare but severe form of FH. Untreated, FH leads to early heart disease and heart attacks and is one of the largest killers in the nation. There's 84 million people worldwide that have it. The last point is FH is treatable with statins and, um, and various other um, treatments. I bring it forward because I guess I was a little cavalier. I've been, I've been pronounced with it for 15 years and have just, I've done my medications and stuff. But going to this um, symposium where there was over 200 people like me in the room to share their stories. Uh, we had doctors from McGill University, Western University, uh, the University of Montreal, all there to talk to us and brought home the seriousness. And we should all make sure we take care of it in our own families. Um, so, um, anyway, that's, that was my experience and it was well worthwhile going. I'm sorry that I missed a council meeting. I apologize to people who voted for me that I was away. Um, on Saturday, I went to the reopening of the Port Hotel and um, it, they have a sushi bar, they're redoing the bar, um, they're redoing the rooms. A new family to town, new owners. They are so excited. The food was unbelievable, highly recommended. And last but not least, this coming Saturday, the Association for Community Living has the Guns N' Roses Hockey Challenge and Fundraiser. And I encourage anybody to come out and um, they have 50-50s, they have raffles, they have prizes, and they have me as a referee and I am bribable. I take money. And that's my report. Okay, thank you. Councilor Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, nothing significant to report from any of my committees this week, but I will um, just let everybody know that the Air Quality Committee, or Air Qual Quality Council, is putting on a Burn It Smart workshop. Um, it's Saturday, November 21st, from 2 to 4 at the Fire Hall, and they're going to talk about um, burning techniques just to make sure that we are all burning as well as possible. Councilor McLennan. <laughs> Um, there's going to be a wood stacking competition, moisture testing, um, and just a lot of great information because it is a problem in our valley, especially this time of year. So the more we can do, the better, and there will be prizes, so please attend. All right, I'll be there. <laughs> Councillor Allen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a few things. I guess uh, I was at the Solid Waste uh, Management Committee meeting, which thankfully I've already gotten to talk about, so I don't have to talk about that again. Uh, the advi Advisory Planning Commission meeting, uh, again, we went through all the bylaws, so uh, we know what was going on there. Um, had a great meeting with uh, the young student about uh, about alcohol in the in the city. Uh, he was going around to all of the, the councillors and mayor and all sorts of people around the community. So that was that was very cool. Um, and then uh, had a food security and climate change committee meeting on Thursday, uh, talking about some recommendations that we'll bring to council uh, for the next meeting. Uh, around bike lanes and all sorts of th good things. Uh, so that's about that. Uh, I did want to mention one one thing just in the report. Um, you know, we're kind of, we're a year through on our uh, stay here in council. Uh, and uh, I want to, to just make a note that uh, I think in the past couple weeks there's been some uh, actions uh, by, by, by the mayor that uh, cause a lot of concern uh, in council and and in the community, um, and I just wanted to remind us all that uh, we were put here 
uh, specifically on the the notion that previous councils uh, were not able to work well together uh, and had troubles communicating um, together. Um, so I think it's very important for us to be reminded of that uh, and, uh, and to redouble our efforts around uh, working as a team in council, uh, ensuring that we're always kept apprised of everything that's happening uh, and, uh, and that the mayor is, is a spokesperson for, uh, for council as a whole. So that's it. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Citywise uh, Heritage Commission meeting earlier uh, last week. Um, 13 very good reports came out. I guess the most important one is the Santa train coming up December 5th and 6th. So uh, I'll leave you with that. Um, on a Saturn note, um, this past Saturday uh, we lost Ann Fleming. Um, she's the founder of the Flandangle store. Uh, something she's been doing passionately for 28 years and also an avid member of uh, the Salmon Festival, so we're going to miss Anne. I have no more, more details than that, just that uh, she left us on Saturday. And that's my report. Thank you. Do you want to um, move acceptance of councillors' reports? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. All those in favour? Um, any new business? And this is question periods and opportunity for public and press. Yes, I have a couple mm -hmm. motions. All right. Um, just a couple motions. Um, number one, I saw today uh, there was a lot of news on, on the uh, airways about the refugee uh, situation and, and uh, Canada bringing in um, some refugees into, uh, into the country. Um, so I wanted to propose a, a motion uh, and uh, an actual motion, not a notice. Um, I'll, I'll read it out. I gave it to the, to the city clerk, so she has it as well. Uh, but the motion reads, uh, whereas the federal government plans to admit uh, 25,000 Syrian refugees before the end of the year, uh, this is a motion to immediately send a letter to the Minister of Immigration, uh, Citizenship and Refugees, indicating that the city of Port Alberni is willing indicating the City of Port Alberni's willingness to work with uh, local and federal agencies to provide uh, for relocation of a portion of that uh, 25,000 refugees. So um, if I could get a second. Second. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just to, to speak a little bit about it, uh, it's just a, uh, I know there was a lot of um, concern in the, the government about meeting their commitment in the next eight weeks, uh, which is a, a, a very short amount of time um, so uh, I just like to put it out there as a as the community with a heart um, that we could potentially help in any way that we could to bring those refugees uh, to Canada so that's just what the motion is about okay that's one what's your other uh, we'll, we should vote on it first I guess and then. well you're, it's just a notice of motion right no it's a motion motion okay I'm sorry yeah. and I Chari uh, Councillor Minion seconded. Is there any discussion? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is this a. You're telling the government that our doors are open and. Or Just to express our willingness to help if we can in any way. Okay. Yeah. As a city? Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't normally ask uh, for the motion immediately, but. Because of the eight-week time frame, no, I you were to wait another I understand two weeks, that then, it's, just for, then it's very uh, difficult. Uh, to the refugee program, there's, a, uh, there's a making a commitment with the federal government in taking refugees, which I think is a beautiful thing. There's a, a, a certain financial commitment. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if you're aware of that. And yeah, yeah I, it's, it's only a willingness. It's not a commitment. So. Okay. Thank you. And as long as you understand it, so, you know, we can't expect to our staff to be doing all sorts of major things that, you know, we, we they have other commitments in terms of their time and so on. So um, at this point, it's just a letter. Yeah. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Next item. Uh, the other one, uh, again, is just a letter, uh, and this could be a notice of motion. 
Um, and it's just a letter uh, to the federal government uh, urging them, as, as uh, we already heard from many councillors in the previous discussion, uh, urging uh, them to uh, consider and, and uh, move forward on their plans for legalization of marijuana. So just to urge them to do so quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else? That's it. All right, then we're into question period. It's an opportunity for the public and the press to ask questions to the Mayor and Council. Any questions? Kathleen Landers, 4213 8th Avenue. Uh, my first question is, uh, or is on the uh, responses to my questions at the last council meeting. And uh, unfortunately, the process as it's working doesn't give uh, uh, the, the, the person asking these questions an, an opportunity to rebut the responses from council. And I think that's fair. It's not conducive to accountability and openness in government. And but we haven't talked about it, so it's not a, it's not a criticism in that respect. I'm hoping that you'll take a look at it and maybe the sh that opportunity should be given to the person to respond to the responses, and uh, that maybe it's best that this uh, the responses take place prior to this question period, so this can happen. And it's something I would like council to look at because I think it's unfair for us not to say, okay, we don't agree with the response and for these reasons. It's okay not to agree, doesn't mean to say you're right, but, that, but that's an opportunity that should be provided to people asking questions. The second thing on that is I do, I do believe, and I've thought this before, that the questions and the responses at this part of the meeting, it is part of the formal meeting, should be recorded in the minutes and for some of the reasons that were brought up at a previous discussion. And I would hope Councillor would look at that and look at making it a formal part of, of the meeting as it should be. And it is a written record that's available, available to people in, in this case if you come to meetings in a hard copy. The, and the other, the other thing that I w would like to see, and I'm saying myself, I can only speak for myself, so when I say I, it's, it's, it, I can't speak for the rest of the public, is I think it's, uh, we don't have a formal employee evaluation program. There was a recommendation in the 2011 report. I think it's a very positive thing for this to happen. Uh, it was mentioned that uh, the, the manager will do this as necessary, and that echoes concerns to me that it's only done in a, in a, in a disciplinary manner. I may be wrong, but that's, but that's what it, it sounds to me. If someone isn't performing properly, then you do an evaluation. An evaluation program is not meant to be disciplinary, and any arbitrator in this province will, will, will support what I'm saying. It's meant to be a positive thing, it's supposed to uh, uh, put across to employees how they're, well they're performing, and, uh, and, and, and talk about areas where they may be able to do better. So helping people improve their, 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 their work performance prior to maybe getting into trouble. So it's a, it should be a very positive thing. And I think it's uh, something that we should be doing. Maybe not many pl pl places do it on an annual basis. I think that's not necessary here. But certainly I think it should be done in a two-year, three-year process over time. Not to have it done at all, I don't think is conducive to, to uh, good management. So I'd like to counsel to... I'm asking if you would consider these uh, these recommendations I'm making on the on the, those two issues. Okay. Since it has to be a question, I have to. Will you? <laughs> okay. And a little confused over the dispensary of the marijuana thing there, and I'm looking at it not whether you agree or disagree. I'm looking at it because what I'm hearing, what I heard at the meeting, unless I, maybe I under misunderstood, and please tell me if I'm, I did. I heard council say they all agree that it's uh, illegal. Interrupt me when, if, if I'm off track here. I heard you say that it was something that should be controlled by the government and the RCMP. Then I heard you pass a motion to look at guidelines and regulating these places 
And that left me even more confusing than it was when, when I started. But it's, and, and the other comment that was made was, we can't do anything about it. Well, we, I, don't, I don't support that. I think we can. If we, say Ill, if we see illegal operations taking place in, this, in, in, our, in our municipality, we have a right to, to, to bring this forward and insist on action to, to, to stop this. And I'm not talking against marijuana yes or marijuana no. I'm talking about the legality of it. And you have to separate what you believe, whether you're for or against it. So you've said that you don't agree, that it is illegal. You said it should be the, the obligation of the government and the, and the RCMP. And then you pass a motion saying we'll, we'll come up with some recommendations regarding where they can do it and where they can't do these Ill Ill illegal operations. I'm confused. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Anderson. Okay. A motion. Any, any other, anybody else that wishes to uh, address? I have a question because I can't see so. Have you all got your winner's choice Junior Hockey Society lottery tickets? <laughs> do you have more than one? We sold 840 to date. Our target is 1,900. We'll be happy anything over 1,200. <clears throat> Ex-city manager Thursday bird draw is this Sunday, two thousand dollars. So you better get your tickets. Uh, one in eight hundred and forty chance right now. That's pretty good odds. That's way better than any other lottery ticket we ever bought. So, sort of a statement and a question. And uh, <coughs> and economic development minister, manager Pat Deacon, minister, yeah, has tickets on him right now. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Cole. A motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor, move it. Yes.